What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you my methodology for modeling complex trusses in Revit or complex steel, concrete or wooden structures with lots of beams and uh, columns. But before we get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be using the architectural template for this project. You can maybe use structural if you want, but uh, for what I'm demonstrating, I think the architectural template will work uh, well enough. Okay, so now if I go here into the 3D view, as you can see, I've got two levels over here, so I'm just going to be using these two levels. And, and now we need to set up some sort of a a uh, structure that's going to help us model our actual structure. So the, this is kind of just a, let's call it fake structure or some support elements that are going to help us uh, place our structural elements. And uh, this probably doesn't make sense at this point, but let's just uh, continue on. So let me go into level one and create some uh, reference planes. So I'm just going to go here to reference plane and uh, do maybe a couple and Let's make the distance between them something like 5,000 millimeters or 5 meters. I think this is, well, that's good enough. And I'm just going to be naming them. So let's name this one number one and let's name this one number two. Or actually, let's change that. Let's name it into A and B. Uh, it's going to make a bit more sense uh, later on. So this should be B. Okay. So we've got our reference planes and if we go into our 3D, we've got our reference or our levels. So now it's time to start uh, placing some, uh, some of those support elements. So if I go here into south elevation, as you can see here, we've got our levels and I'm just going to start the model line uh, tool. Uh, and the shortcut is LE. So just type in LE and now we need to set the work plane. And to set the work plane, uh, let's set one of those two that I've created earlier on. So let's go with uh, reference plane A and just hit OK. And now I'm just going to start off by doing one vertical line like this, then one at 45 degrees, then one that goes vertically down. Then I can select these two, type in CO for copy, and then copy this, uh, just make sure that multiple is selected. And you can just copy it a few times. Let's say we want some complex structure that looks like this. Then I'm just going to go to model line again and maybe close this uh, top portion. Okay, and once we have this, if we go into 3D, this is what you get. So you can see your uh, your model lines in 3D, that's the important part. And as you can see, if I select any of them, uh, the points uh, light up. So the points can be snapped too and that's really important. Now let's select this whole thing, go maybe into level one and just go into copy or CO again is the shortcut. And uh, let's just uh, uncheck constraint and this will allow us to copy from one reference plane to another. And now if I go into 3D, this is what we have. So we've got kind of two of these 2D trusses, truss, truss or truss, truss, truss. Okay, sorry for my uh, bad pronunciation, but anyway, you get the point. So we've got two of these and now let's just connect them. And for that, we need to select either level one or level two. Let's start off from level two. So go model line and here for placement plane, let's go with a level two. And as you can see over here, this is what I went, why I went with A and B so we can distinguish them easier from level one and two. If we had one, two and one, two, it would be confusing. But anyway, let's go with a level two. And now as you can see, you can snap from here to here, from here to here, maybe snap like this. And you can just play around creating some structure, whatever structure you want to have. And of course you can make this uh, maybe a bit more asymmetric, maybe a bit more wild. I'm just going on just some basic structure. And then you would repeat this uh, for level one. So just switch to level one and maybe you can go down and just go like that. Uh, let's see, okay, here's the point. Then that should go to here, then that should go to here. Okay. So you get the points, you just go, go like that and you finish the whole, uh, the whole structure. And you basically just go like that, creating uh, these uh, model lines. And now you're going to use this uh, kind of a supporting structure that you created to attach your structural elements to. 
so now if I go here to the structural tab we've got our beams and we've got our columns uh, now if I select the column as you can see here uh, on the modify tab we have a few options so we have an option of course to load in a new family but not only that we have an option for vertical as well as a slanted column so what does this mean so this means you can place a slanted column that's kind of going that's a bit angled like these ones we have over here now I'm going to show you two options how to create this one using the slanted column and one using a beam so let's start off with this slanted column. Uh, now I'm just going to ignore these two clicks uh, and just uh, go with the, this 3D snapping. And as you can see now we can snap to pretty much wherever we want. If, we, if I want to go from this midpoint to this line over here I can create a beam that goes like that. Of course this beam doesn't really make sense in this construction but you get the point. You can snap to pretty much any any of these uh, of these points that you created. So just check Okay, where did it go? Structure, yeah, 3D snapping. So you just go like this and you can create columns like that. And they don't have to be slanted, you can do even the the vertical ones, I think. Yeah, you can do the vertical ones, you can do the slanted ones, you can just play around. And I usually like to start from the bottom and for the first click and for the second click go up here. Uh, but anyway, you don't have to use columns for this. If you prefer to use beams for something like that, you can do that as well. So let's switch to the structure and let's go with the beam command. So BM is the shortcut if you want to use shortcuts. So let's me let's just type in BM. Okay, and again I'm using this uh, just the universal beam that comes loaded in with this template. But of course you can go here load family and then let's just go to metric and see. Uh, structural framing, steel, and you can go with pretty much whatever you want. Yeah, this looks cool. Let's go with that one. Do we have an option for heights? Okay, let's go with the smaller one. Okay, so for the beam, uh, you need to check the level. So let's just go with level one and let's start from here to here and create that beam. And now in order to make it kind of slanted or angled, uh, you go here for the end level offset and as we uh, look here, uh, the level 2 is at 4000 millimeters, so we just need to select this and give it an end level offset of oops, of 4000 millimeters. Uh, uh, now just be careful, uh, the end offset, uh, just be careful of which, oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay, uh, just be careful when you create it, uh, you don't want to uh, to mix up uh, the start point and the end point. So the start point it was your first click and the end point was your second click. So that's how just, just how Revit looks at it. Now we can just go back into structure beam, maybe do this beam over here. Okay, let's go into level 2, finish off this beam over here as well. Okay, then go to structure, slanted columns, and let's just use the 3D snapping option to finish off these. Okay, and as you can see it kind of already trimmed this, but I'm going to show you how to trim it over here where it doesn't really look good. But anyway, let, let's just finish this off. So column and we have one over here and yeah, and one over here. Okay. And as you can see, this looks kind of weird. And uh, when I select these things, as you can see here for the slanted columns, you actually have an option of kind of changing the the angle so as you can see just using this it kind of gives it an offset and here's that offset let's just place it at zero and then it's going to go back into that point that you originally set up and beams have these uh, little drag options where you can kind of drag it to the end uh, to kind of overlap over this over this column and uh, now to make this whole thing uh, look really nice, uh, you need to go and use the cope command. So let's say over here you have this, that's that's or this here that looks really weird. So you can maybe extend this column a bit to cover this whole thing, and then you go here to the modify tab. You find this cope, and CP is the shortcut, so I can just type in CP, 
and then first you select the element that's kind of secondary so in this case this is secondary and this is going to be cut like this to fit the whole thing so you select that and then you select this and then as you can see it made the cut and then you select uh, oops you select this again and you select the beam and it again uh, well it made just a, a little cut but you get a point so you can do that for the rest of these so you just make those cuts like that and just be careful what you click first so if I do this as you can see now it's going to cut this beam instead and maybe go like this now I think this yeah as you can see now it poked a hole through this beam so that's uh, that's again a cool option and maybe we can ex if I extend it down it's going to remove coping and it's just going to be kinda attached to the bottom of this uh, of this whole beam and maybe let's cope this as well so go cope okay and it made a hole but hole looks nice okay so you get the point that's how you create these complex structures first you need to uh, or this is how I do it anyway first you kinda set this uh, kind of a structure that's going to help you guide your columns and uh, or and your beams and then attach your columns and beams to the structure you've created Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. If you want to support my channel and get all of my project files the, of all, all models that I did in Revit, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.